The internet is full of hate. This is why you shouldn't be. If you've spent any considerable amount of time online, you've probably noticed that hate has grown only more rampant with each passing day that these platforms grow larger and larger. Now I'd never want to just sit here and make a video about hate on the internet being just the end of the world. Of course it's not, of course the reason we're online, hopefully, is to connect, is to find all the people that we love so much because we see parts of ourselves in them and we see inspiration through what they're doing and we feel a calling to be true to ourselves the way that they're true to themselves. It's a beautiful place where we can witness so many things at once that have never been possible to witness simultaneously before. So I love the internet for that reason, and I love seeing people post their art, I love seeing people post their comedy, I love seeing people post just who they are. And you get to decide who to follow. Why do you follow anybody? I follow them because I resonate with them. They're either really leading me indirectly to who I want to be, just by uploading the content that's true to them, I find parts and pieces of myself in what they post. And some people I'll follow for a specific reason maybe, but for the most part, I really just want to see people freeing themselves. I want to see people enjoying life and learning what it means to enjoy your life, what it means to, to face your fear, what it means to Look in the mirror with love. Trust me, I know it's not always that easy. I'd like to read you this excerpt from my journal. Being exactly who I really am means not being put into the box of all the restraints I don't want to abide by. Not being the things that I do not want to be. When I embody the truth of who I am, I'll inevitably trigger anyone else who currently lacks the courage to do so, who is presently disconnected from their desire to do so. This mirror I unintentionally hold up to anyone who is stuck in self-disallowing and denial will remind them immediately of all the excuses they have collected in order to continue their self-inflicted repression. This is when they will call me out of touch for being a dreamer, awkward and cringy for being vulnerable, pretentious for being poetic, privileged for taking a heart-led risk on my personal journey and unoriginal for being ultimately authentic to myself and the nature of love. This happens as a first response from them because these are their own personal blockages and obstacles to be acknowledged and addressed that must first be brought into their awareness in order for them to alchemize any hateful projections and then be able and willing to see other freely and fully embodied people as the inspirations and beacons of hopeful light that we are. Now I have to see myself as being capable of accepting this, accepting the fact that I will experience being misunderstood in more ways than I can conceive of, and I have already amassed some decent experience with this. And it's not so bad. It's definitely better than feeling like my own prisoner, scared of fear itself. I am deciding to be bold in my expression because I know it's where all of my magic happens. So that is just a page that I wrote very recently to help myself process negative comments, projections, hate, and honestly, I've been noticing a lot of people lately just coming out and saying, wow, since when is the internet like completely littered with hatred? And you can just about find it on any type of video, anybody being, anybody having fun, anybody being artistic, anybody being funny, anybody being political. <laughs> The list goes on, hatred is found so easily, and it's usually at the very top of the comment section because it garners such a response. 
and therefore then there's a bunch of comments following it, you know, fighting, all leading to nothing. But either way, I just see it, I see it in a very sad light, a light where so many people don't want to admit or even admit to themselves that they just want to be out there too, that they just want to have a place where they can be themselves, where they can feel safe, where they can feel fully able to express all that they keep inside and all that they can't even remember how to connect with. This is the way that I see the hatred and that's why I process it in the way that I do. Now, I think it's still really important to hold space, to hold so much space for all our feelings that we have when we're on the receiving end of all this hatred. What is this hatred? This hatred is just a disconnection from ourselves. People who are trolling for fun, even if they've convinced themselves that it's all about joking around, that it's just for the attention. Still, why is that the best use of your time? That's what maybe they should be asking themselves. And there's so many places that we can feel lost or stuck in, even just when we have the idea to post something. I know what that's like. I get so many ideas every day of a little video concept or a piece of art, a collage, a text, a poem that I will immediately overcomplicate in my mind and I'll already create haters, imaginary haters that sit there and will judge it in my head. They don't even exist yet, but they do because I, I make them. And that sucks. It literally sucks so much. But um, still, still every day, it's all I can think about. It's all I can think about. You have to make the art, Leah. You have to make the art. You have to get your stuff out there somehow. You just have to take the microphone. It's not going to be given to you. I always think of the last episode from the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, this excellent, excellent series, where she's been working a job and it's close to her dream, but her ideas are really just being funneled through and used by the show that she's working for, and she's not really getting to own her own art. And at one of these opportunities that she has to be on stage for the first time, and she's given a script, she takes the mic and she goes completely off script, and she, she knocks it out of the park. She's a huge hit on national TV, and she makes it big in her dream of being a stand-up comedian, all because she decided to take the microphone at a time where nobody was giving her permission to do so and say what she wanted to say into it. And I feel that way having quit something that, you know, was successful for a time and a lot of people enjoyed receiving from me, which was ASMR. And I saw the value in it long enough to continue and to feel validated through making that one particular art form. But it's just, yeah, it's just not the entirety of who I am and I'm the kind of person that has to be honestly naked on a stage to be creatively satisfied. Might be my Scorpio moon and my Leo rising, just unable to keep anything locked inside. I have to let it all out, let it shine, give it its spotlight. Because I, as a Virgo as well, I see that God is in the details. <laughs> oh, what to do. I'm getting hated on on the internet. Sometimes it makes me feel like a complete fraud to just up and switch doing what I was doing before. But the truth is, I felt so caged. And in another way, like a complete imposter by continuing to do something that just didn't feel like it was all I had to offer. I just didn't feel like it was, and I've always known there was more. And if you feel any type of way like that, I strongly suggest that you take smaller steps. Slowly the bigger steps become more possible through the smaller steps of trusting yourself, of just picking up the pen and paper, picking up the camera, picking up the paint and the paintbrush just moving your body for the sake of you, 
for the sake of healing that part of yourself that's been stifled by the voices that we learn that tell ourselves, oh, that's not important, that's not actually gonna get you anywhere, that's not gonna be what makes you money, that's not gonna be the thing that gets you your own place to live and your own car to drive, why not? <laughs> When I was a kid, I didn't differentiate between my dreams and those things being possible. They were all inherently possible through my dreams. Didn't you feel that way too? Oh, and I just wanna be dramatic. I just wanna sit here like... And confidence, confidence is just commitment. Confidence is a commitment to your decision to do something. Like, if I want to be pretty, I'll just commit to feeling that way and to putting myself in the clothing and the makeup that just lights me up inside and makes me feel that way. And that's often the color red. Maybe it's a different color for you. You should know that. You should know what your color is, what makes you happy. I love you so much. Thank you for listening. Mwah.